Welcome back, uh, I'm Dr. Dai, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at the connection between the cell cycle and cancer development. Cancer encompasses this huge range of diseases that are all rooted in this shared problem of unregulated cell division. So despite the multiple safeguards in the cell cycle, errors are gonna occur, okay? Um, one of the critical checkpoints checks for accurate DNA replication during S phase, right? That's that last G2 phase um, checkpoint. But even, even when everything is checked, there's still going to be a certain amount of errors that are missed, little mutations during the replication process that are going to persist into the daughter cell. These gene mutations arise just, just from, you know, little errors as, as the copying process occurs. But those little errors, if they're in the wrong gene, can initiate cancer. All right. So initially, these alterations can be minor, right? But they increase the cell's susceptibility to further mistakes, especially if the error, the little mutation, occurs in a gene that, say, is responsible for checking the DNA to make sure it's correct. All right. So accumulating uncorrected errors has a tendency to speed up the cell cycle and the, you're gonna have some loss of control of the repair mechanisms. Uh, they're gonna not move, they're not gonna be as efficient because they don't have as much time to do their job. So mutated cells eventually start to grow unchecked. The, those checkpoints stop functioning and the repair and detection processes don't have enough time to do their job. Um, and oftentimes this will lead to cells that are dividing really, really rapidly and will develop tumors. Okay, that's tumor formation that comes from. Um, so what do we call that? All right, so when we have these little errors in genes that are responsible for encoding positive cell cycle regulators, um, we call these proto-oncogenes. So if you get an error in one of those, that's where you can lead to what we'll call an oncogene, a gene that causes cancer. Um, so the cell can acquire this oncogene, um, or cells rather, that acquire an oncogene. So where you have this mutation that happens in a gene important for cell cycle regulation, um, we're gonna end up producing a less functional or non-functional protein, right? Because genes code for proteins. Um, so if you all of a sudden have this component that's part of cell cycle regulation, that the protein, it doesn't fold properly, it doesn't work to its full potential, now we're going to have problems correctly completing the cell cycle. Now, most of the time, these little errors, they don't actually harm the organism because the mutation isn't passed on it's certainly not passed on to your offspring, right? We're talking about mutations that are occurring in your somatic cells. Um, but there are lots of mechanisms in place and some of these little errors, they just don't matter uh, and they don't get passed on any further than that. But sometimes one of these mutations will happen in a what we call a hyperactive positive regulator like CD, uh, CDK, which is a kinase. It's a protein that activates other proteins. When that happens, it can cause the cell to push past checkpoints too early. Like we mentioned on the previous slide, you know, where you, the cell cycle speeds up. You, you lose that pause point where everything gets checked and made sure that it's right. So this can result in cells that have even more damage. Okay, so imagine for a moment that you have a cell and that, that CDK protein's a little messed up and it causes you to jump, jump past that uh, G1 regulation, let's say. Um, now all of a sudden you're replicating DNA that might be damaged and you're replicating it faster than you should and you hop into G2 and again, that CDK isn't functioning properly and so all the DNA doesn't get checked, only some of it does. Well, some of the stuff that didn't get checked Maybe there were errors that could have been repaired if the cell cycle was functioning properly, because that's a really important piece. If something's wrong, there's repair machinery that will be brought in and will fix it before the cell progresses. Or if there's too much damage, then cell death is, is started, um, apoptosis. We'll get to that in a minute.
the good news is most of the time when this happens, the the damage, the amount of just things going wrong in the cell are so extreme that the cell is incapable of dividing again. All right, so no harm. Uh, the cell just kind of gets stuck. And like I said, there's, there's special things that, uh, pathways that will occur at that point that lead to the cell being destroyed. Great, no problem. But if for some reason that cell is functional enough to make another division and another and another, and we can keep accumulating and perpetuating these, these mutations, these problems, um, we can end up with a whole series of these proto-oncogenes ending up with mutations in them and we just completely bypass the cell cycle checkpoints. When that happens, we reclassify it as an oncogene. It now has enough mutations and damage to it that it is causing cancer as opposed to has the potential to cause cancer, right? Proto-oncogenes have the potential to cause it. They're reclassified as oncogenes when they accumulate enough mutation that cell cycle checkpoints just break down. All right, next we have tumor suppressor genes. So these are like proto-oncogenes. Um, they were discovered in cancer cells. Um, these genes encode proteins that act as negative cell cycle regulators. Okay, so negative cell cycle regulators, as opposed to the proto-oncogenes, those were um, positive cell cycle regulators. Um, so the tumor suppressors, these genes encode those negative cell cycle regulators, and they're capable of halting uncontrolled cell division when activated. Uh, so a way to think about this, this is if you have a gene whose job is, oh, cell, this isn't right, stop. Well, you've messed with that gene, and now it can't say stop. Where with the proto-oncogenes, those were ones that were like, Woohoo, let's keep going. It's okay, we haven't finished. Let's catch up to the next thing. Let's keep moving to the next phase. So that one was speeding things up. This one is where damage has been found and instead of stopping things like it's supposed to, it doesn't, it doesn't stop things if it's been mutated. Now, some notable tumor suppressor proteins include uh, retinoblastoma protein, RB1, um, P53, uh, P21, uh, collectively they function to block cell cycle progression um, until specific conditions are met, right? Remember we talked about that. There's certain things that have to happen and these genes, the, the proteins that these um, genes code for, are responsible for making sure that all those little check marks happen, right? Um, cells with mutated negative regulators uh, may be unable to stop the cell cycle from carrying forward. So mutations in p53 genes are found in over half of human tumor cells um, this isn't surprising because p53 has a really important role at the g1 checkpoint um, it activates genes that pause the cell cycle for dna repair very very important we've mentioned that before and it initiates the dna repair process or also plays a role in activating the proteins that trigger cell death also called apoptosis it looks like apoptosis, but that first P is a soft apoptosis. Um, a damaged P53 gene is going to allow the cell to just keep on dividing. It's going to pass on those mutations and they're going to keep accumulating new ones. Um, additionally, that, that impaired P53, it can't induce cell death. Apoptosis is so important. It plays a huge role in preventing cancer from taking place, you know, developing in just a huge range of everyday normal parts of our cell cycle. Uh, we utilize programmed cell death for lots of things, including getting rid of cells that are too old. Um, and cells that can't do that, that's where we see these cancers build up. We see tumors. All right, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Uh, next time we're gonna look at prokaryotic cell division. It's a little bit different than what we've been looking at. All right, look forward to seeing you then.